Hello there, this is Anthony Brown from Amped. I'm here in Vegas at NAV, and I ran into a good friend of mine here, Gary, Gary Mundell, head of Tippett Studios, uh, industry veteran, uh, and you know, he started telling us some stories, and I figured, well, this would be a great uh, chance to stop, and Gary said he was willing to share some stories with uh, some of our Amp followers, so, uh, <laughs> so I thought we'd sit down and have a chat. I, I'm going to make myself sound old, right? Is no, that, is no, that, experience, is exper oh, industry, industry veteran. Industry in, veteran. Industry, that's what okay. we go with. Yeah. So what do I start with? Well, that, that I invented computer graphics. Yeah, the fact that actually that's actually <laughs> that's not far from the truth. That's the kind of freaky thing. Yet, yeah, won't you start there? Start there. Yeah. Well, I started the industry. I'm actually Canadian, so, so yeah, 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 I, I, yeah I, fellow I live, Canadian. I, yeah. I live in Berkeley. Um, uh, with Tippett Studio, and that's that's a most recent invention. But uh, I started. Oh God, I was born born in Toronto, mm -hmm. a Canadian boy. Uh, lived most of my life in Ottawa, and then went off to Sheridan College, Sheridan College in Toronto, and then from there went to NYIT back in nineteen. Oh my God, eighty two. Wow, eighty two. Listen, well, listen. You didn't have we, to bring for, up dates, and we did. You could have left the dates out. Sure. <laughs> and then we did. Uh, I started there doing computer graphics, studying computer graphics, and that yeah. was back when we were like, uh, it was all vector graphics back then. It was all right. pixels, math. You had to write it math. Was math. It was math, and I think I told you yesterday we had a uh, a vax. Yeah. Uh, we were using a vax system, and my my personal disk was a forty megabyte drive. And it was a platter, right? It was yeah. what? Weighed like, about 20 pounds? Yeah, it was like a pipe, we used to call it like yeah. pie plates, right? Yeah. And it was like about 20 pounds, 40 megabytes. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And, and then we were still using, uh, I shouldn't even be telling you this, but we were still using punch cards. Punch cards? Yeah. That's going like, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then went off to Alias and worked at Alias forever and did. Uh, so now Alias is famous for what? Maya. For those people who are not, Maya. you know, so digital we, media guys. Myself and two other not two about 20 other people in the office we did uh we started maya and built maya and it's like hey maybe we got ourselves a cool little package that'll catch on now maya for those of you who don't know is what basically what you do all the modeling for animation and vfx i mean is and animation the and yeah oh and, and that's everything. right you'll do your your rigging you'll do your keyframe animation all of that is done in maya right and and this is one of the guys that like basically invented it sort of sort yeah of. i'll like, take partial credit partial, yeah, part of the team that did part of the team that did but we're a small team and it was literally only a team of maybe 20 people and then we uh yeah then then i did that and i think i used maya 1.0 in hawaii on final right. final fantasy the troy working with you at the troy, time troy, Brooks? troy came on with me right. um i didn't uh let me see. Yeah, Troy came on as sis, sis, right? He came on as head of systems. Head of systems. Yeah, right, right, like right. he's basically the CTO. Yeah, that uh, another product that got widely used at least for a while. It's cute. Was cute that came out of that as well. Yeah. yeah, and that came out of Scooby. Scooby. Yeah, the, the derivative was Scooby. Oh. Okay. Square. Oh. Uh, square cute. batch is square batch rendering or something like that. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, it yeah. came out as eventually it was uh, came out as Cube, right? Right. Right. And then uh, the rest was history. So, and there. this was fi now was Final Fantasy the yeah. movie that was made from the video game. Was that the first ever fully CG feature? Yes. No. Well, well, it was right well, around well, then. while we were there, uh, I, I remember the the first uh, Christmas the Christmas uh, movie, right? The Christmas. Uh, oh, go on, help me. Here. What you mean the one with uh, Tom Hanks? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, the, oh, a toy, when did Toy Story a come toy out? Toy Story came out. Before yeah, then too. Before then too, and right, then Bugs, right. Bugs Life. But I guess it was right. certainly the, the first time they did like photorealistic humans. Right, photorealistic humans, and then of course that generated a whole, the whole controversy as to whether humans uh, would be replaced by CGI. And That's back right. then, and back then, I was like, hell yeah. And, <laughs> and of course, everybody's like, oh my god. And, I was, and Hanks came out and he made a couple comments about, oh, this is terrible. And and, and but but all of us at Square, we were all like, we were all like. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We, we won't need actors yeah, anymore. Yeah, just no. matter of time. Yeah. And now it's like common practice to, to not to have full. Well, yeah, there's some cases where they have full full characters that are doing dialogue, but 
but it's well, you still know the, in the have, area. Of have you seen the the uh, the last Boba Fett, the Boba Fett series that they did? Yeah, of course. That Mark Hamill, young Mark Hamill. Yeah. That's about as close as I've ever seen to a realistic. But to us in the acted, industry, we can pick yeah. them out. You know? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah no. Yeah. I, I, well, yeah. I actually, I think I think you could, even if you're not from the industry, you could still go well. Number one, you know that Mark Hamill's not that young anymore, so you know it's being done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah. But but seeing the little artifacts and little pieces, well, yeah, the, 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 they're, they're the, still they're still. They're, I think I think people can still anybody can still tell it's a deep fake. Uh, yes and no. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the one guy who's doing all the Tom Hanks or not Tom Hanks, the uh, um, what's his face from the Top Gun. Um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise, the guy who does yeah. the Tom Cruise ones. Uh, yeah. I can't remember his name, but he, he's, he's. Some of those deep fakes are pretty damn good. I mean, it's getting to the point now where you, it, it's, it's in, awesome. unless you sit down and think about it. So that being said, the deep fakes are definitely taking over. That's it's going to happen. And and when we were when 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 we were in, um, and when we were in, uh, that was what twenty years ago, and we were predicting the future back then. But I yeah. I thought it would happen sooner than it is now, but it. But we're but, getting there. But it's just started. Just and, started. And so, just to like pick your brain for a second, um, everybody is talking about real time, right? Everybody's talking about Unreal. Well, everybody's been talking about real time for 20 years, right? Right. But true, they've been talking about it. But I think this is the first time I've been at NAB, and it's pretty much all over the place. It's Unreal Engine, like, like the number of LED walls, the number of it, it can't it can't be stopped. No, I mean, it's it, well, not that anybody's trying to stop it. What I'm saying is, is the Unreal Revolution is it's still in its infancy, but it's huge. It, right. It's unbelievably huge, and I think if anybody is not fully cognizant of where it's all going in the next couple of years, you're you're already missed the boat. Yeah, I mean, and and so I think it's it's absolutely mind boggling what's going on with Unreal, and right. and, and just seeing all the uh, this is the first time I've been to NAB in a few years, obviously. Yeah, and just to see the transition from what NAB used to be to what it is now, where it is just almost entirely based on Unreal, uh, not only Unreal, but on um, virtual walls, virtual production, and and, and asset uh, asset management, and, asset and, management, and, yeah, and data translation. Well, the and, amount that's and, another and big it's thing. It's unbelievable. So uh, you know, not to not to overly lead you into a plug, ah. however. One of the big challenges that people are dealing with now is because the data has go gotten so large, which of course, you know, Amped is like, you know, we're not unhappy about this. The depth of computing required to do all this work happens to be a bit specialized, which makes us, you know, very, very useful. But you're working on some stuff as well that's dealing with the challenge of moving all those huge assets around and how you can delve into when, when you have big data, right? That's what they used to call it, big data. Number when you have, yeah. When you have big data and you're dealing with petabytes of information that you have to, to, to sort through and share and transfer it around, that's got to be, I would say, if virtual production is like, you know, the, the new kid on the block here that's really taking a lot of the booth space, dealing with data transfer, dealing with the large amounts of data that we're dealing with is probably the other one. It is the, it's the topic that nobody's talking about. Right, they talk about it. Everybody, oh, sorry, everybody's talking about it, but nobody yeah. has a solution. There's no one single solution. There's no one single pathway. Everybody is talking about data, um, as in files, but yeah. but it's more than that. It's, it's product life cycle. It's the whole. It's the whole thing. That, uh, these assets now have tremendous value, right? And um, I think we're still in that framework. We're still thinking about things like. Um, um, Data trans like translating files from one company to another, one file package. I hear to another. people do still sneaker netting stuff. They're putting it on drives and shipping them still. They they are. Like you're they, getting plates on drives. We do we do we do still do that. Um, it, it's a massive issue, and, and and you know my little software venture on the side, uh, we're we're trying to address that. So we can get more into that some other day. But but it's it's the elephant in the room. And all these companies that are generating all the, like here we are at IO and they're generating all this 3D data. It's just massive volumes of data. Oh yeah. And the, they, they're generating the data and they're giving it to the customers, but then how do the customers work with it? How do they, how do the customers take all that data and actually send it out to their other vendors? And how do they send it out to the people that are working for them? 
um, as artists and, and, and creatives. So that's a huge issue. Well, it's, it's a huge it's issue. It's funny that you say that. Yeah, and, and so, so I'm gonna. I just so you know, I am going to talk with <laughs> IOI uh, after this. this. These are the cameras that we bought, right, for Metastage. That's right. And that's so right. we're dealing with. So just to like like I won't we, not get right into the math, but these are 12 megapixel cameras shooting at 60 frames a second. For how long? Right. Let's say you're doing a 15 minute shot. Now multiply that by 106 because you have 106 cameras yeah, no, the, the, shooting at the same time. No, the volume of data is incomprehensibly huge. Okay. And then at, at that point in time, you can't afford to throw any one particular stream of data out or you can't say 20%. It's all value. You can't, it's you can't. All there. So there's no, no. So in the first ingest, when you're getting all the data in from the cameras, the cleaner it is, the no dedupe no deduplication, no uh, uh, compression, no nothing, because you're going to render that into your volumetric image. And okay. so the processing of the data, you want is you want to get the highest resolution volumetric capture you can get, you want as much of that initial data as possible. That's right. Right? That's right. Uh, and so it's like, you know, 15 minutes, I'm gonna, I'll confirm this with them, but I think the math worked out to like 15 minutes of footage is 250 terabytes. That's about right. That's like insane. Now, oh, by the way, I'd like to see that on my phone. Exactly. And so then, then that the, process then, is just insane. And then the other thing you got to think about is, uh, you know, in, in my world, which is, you know, video and, and, and video and film, um, you're on set. Right. Directors don't turn their cameras off no so for a for a, a for a 10 minute for it oh for, for a 10 minute uh take yeah there might be 30 minutes or of 40 raw minutes of raw footage is that any different with these guys no well exactly. i mean it is we tried it we try to manage right, it right at meta stage in, in vancouver and it met the one that's already running in la we 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 try to manage the time a little bit more carefully. That being said, um, once you've captured the the actress or the the, the singer, for example, we, they, they did one with Charlie XCX. Yeah, yeah. Right. I don't know if you saw that video. Um, and they once they capture her in full volumetric, now you're not dealing with we want this shot, that shot, crane shot, uh, a sweeping shot. Well, th those are all virtual. Right. So once you've done that capture, it's more like a play. So you, you're running a scene from a play. There's no camera in a right, play. Right. It's just the audience. Right. Because you're capturing it all. And then you shoot it all after. So actually you end up with a ton of efficiencies in time. True. She's not going from stage to stage. They're not renting the crane to do the crane shot. They're not doing the you know, uh, 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 getting the rails set up to do the, the, the rail shot. They're not like, you know, there's, there's five cameramen and both. It's one and done. She does what she's going to do. And then everything gets lit, shot using the virtual camera and everything. It's pretty cool. In a perfect world. In a perfect world. Well, don't get me wrong. <laughs> It's, it's we, we there's we, artists involved, right? But we it's a process. But we still have to make it perfect for the screen. That's right. That's where it gets complicated. That's where it right. gets complicated. Right. So, um, just to end it off. Okay. Uh, and thank you so much for mm. taking the time. Like Gary, I really appreciate it. Uh, get, just getting the opportunity to, to talk to somebody that has the experience you have, seeing basically the advent of computer graphics and the impact on that oh. in full CG animated film uh, i mean the wild the, like the, the stuff you worked on um thank you very much for for, you're, for you're taking that welcome. time and, and sharing you. that perspective with with the with our amp followers um uh, but just to, to leave you with one last question if you were to tell us one story about that getting it perfect point that you just talked about right like yeah yeah anthony if it goes to plan, it's all going to be like that. Well, but the reality I, 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 I'm, just, you know, I, I'm just saying, you know, the experience that we have in, in visual effects, uh, working with, you know, Netflix and Marvel and, the, and that is that they they do scrutinize every single pixel. So, it, you know, when we when we finally deliver work to the client, uh, it's gone through 
it can go through many, many, many uh, uh, revisions, revisions and, steps. and revision steps and absolute perfection in the final output is demanded. In, every time. In, demanded every time. So all of the tools that we have here, although they, they we, we they're, they're just streams of data that are part of the larger canvas, which is the, the, the final plate we deliver to the customer. And they have to be perfect. They have to be perfect. And so, so that's why, uh, that's kind of why I mentioned, you know, like if we have 3D capture, when you've got 2D capture, motion capture, all that, those are just streams of data that eventually have to be put into the larger, the larger canvas, which is perfection. And the, the demand just keeps going and up. It goes up and up. Like, and I up. mean, don't get me wrong, when I saw Final Fantasy and you got to see the hair move, like that hair was a big deal. Okay, for, well, hair is still a that big, big deal. So. Hair is still a big deal. <laughs> but the level, the standard that you had to reach yeah. for Final Fantasy yeah. has been risen multiple times since, it has. since then. It has, it has, it has. And, but hair, Still it's still a problem. A problem. It's, it's not a problem. problem. Hair. Whenever we hear, whenever we hear a client come in and say we want hair and feathers, you always have to step back and go, okay. Do you okay. know how much that costs? Or you sit back <laughs> and you have to prepare yourself because there's always artifacts, there's always issues. It's it's not, yeah. and, and that's probably the biggest weakness in uh, real time. Is is the oh dealing in, with hair? Is dealing with hair and feathers you know and fur. That's and a that. good yeah. point. So, so that's where that's where Unreal has has you know there's Unreal and others still have an issue with uh there, there's still that finite um or that that very precise uh rendering that's required for hair and flow that's and right. dynamics and all that and it, it's getting Which is there. a whole nother but level it, of math that gets layered but in. it's getting there yeah. it's getting there it's just a matter of time so all right very cool thank cool. you very much gary really appreciate it